hashtag heathen here along with Mrs. Snarky. Hey, honey. Yo. <laughs> and we're back uh, with some more narcissistic mother uh, stuff. Things. Stuff. Things. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I'm sorry it's been such a long time. It, do not blame hashtag heathen for that. It's been entirely my fault. Broke my foot and uh, yeah. Yeah, that's that a was... that's a worthy excuse, so I wouldn't worry about it. <laughs> I mean, if I were tough, if I were like, I don't know, army strong or whatever, <laughs> I would have just plowed right through it. But I'm just not. I'm not army strong. <laughs> I'm not all that I can be. So I apologize. <laughs> we're back. We're, guess who's back? The narcissist. Back again. <laughs> the narcissism is back. Right. So I don't I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Um, it's good. But, just working through it, you know. Yeah, we're working. Through yeah, it. definitely. And there's so many people in the audience who have also been through this. And yep, definitely. Uh, I hope this helps them as well. But uh, yeah, we're moving on to part two. Um, but before we do that, why don't you show your channel? I'm Mrs. Snarky. I have a channel. Of course, you wouldn't know that because I haven't posted in a long time. Uh, I would say I'm having a video coming out soon. I could do that. I could just pull an Evans and be like, soon. Maybe this weekend. Maybe not. Yes. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I do philosophy, politics, um, basically sociology, psychology, whatever I'm interested in, really, essentially. Um, and uh, I have artwork, so buy my art. Yay! Yes, all the links are in the description, so yes, check them because out. Because hashtag heathen is a very responsible YouTuber. Professional. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Unlike the objectively subjective Just Maddie, On Our Last Nerve, God the Silent. The Last Nerve, God the Silent. I don't know. <laughs> Hopefully, I think the Godless Iwan is a superior and original and authentic name for that channel. Just mm -hmm. saying. And I had absolutely nothing to do with the uh, back to the original branding. <laughs> that was sarcasm. <laughs> yes, yeah, that's where it worked. <laughs> yeah, that's where it was actual sarcasm, you know. Not this uh, Trumpian sarcasm, oh, Lord. where I say something absolutely abhorrent and then be like, "Ah, psych." Jk. Psych. Yeah. Oh man. Ugh. So I I'm trying so hard, and uh, I usually <laughs> do. Not always. I didn't. Uh, I wasn't a high achiever in the past few weeks because you know broken foot. But um, we're here. We're gonna talk about why we try so hard mm -hmm. um yeah start of part two so part two is dealing with how narcissistic mothering affects your entire life and as a preamble to this part uh, she says in the previous section we laid out the characteristics and dynamics of maternal narcissism now we will look at how these dynamics directly affect your life Daughters of narcissistic mothers absorb the message, I am valued for what I do rather than for who I am. As we mature, this potent credo can make us act in two wildly different ways, as high achievers and as self-saboteurs. Being raised by a narcissistic mother has far-reaching effects that brand your soul. To excise this brand and become your own person, you will need to work through the recovery program in part three, but first, you will need to identify which behavior pattern is yours. I have all the patterns. <laughs> Pretty much. I mean, the majority of them. Yeah. It's a, it's a mixed bag. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So, um, we're on chapter six now. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's called, I Try So Hard, The High Achieving Daughter. And she begins it with, I decided early on, like at age 10, that working hard was the only way to feel good about myself and to compensate for all the, quote, not good enough messages. I wish someone had told me that it wouldn't fill the, wouldn't fill the bill as I imagined it would. 
the hard work escape sounded good at the time. And this is a quote from Carrie, age 35. Uh, yeah, that's a very early age to come to that kind of conclusion. Yeah. But it is about compensating. Mm -hmm. Because you're, you're made to feel as though just, you know, who you are, your being, is only valued through what you could do for other people namely mom mm -hmm. in this case so and even then it's not good enough no course. no and this is um this was me entirely um uh, and i think part of me also thought that maybe if i'm the best at whatever this is i'll i'll finally like she'll finally be accepting of me and think that I'm good enough sort of right. thing. Yeah, it, instead of you're already good enough and I love you unconditionally, mm -hmm. it's you have to purchase my love through things that you do, can do for me, what you can bring to me, what value you give to me, which is very toxic. Yes, it really is. Um, she goes on to say, The high-achieving daughter, whom I'll call Mary Marvel, embarks on a whirlwind of achievement, out to prove to her mother and to the world just how good she can be. I am worthy, she is trying to tell herself and her mother, because of the extraordinarily impressive things that I can accomplish. She finds it difficult to love herself just for who she is. She bases her worth on her accomplishment and her busyness. When not accomplishing something she or others thinks is great, she feels worthless. The high achiever becomes a human doing rather than a human being, who is accepted for and comfortable just being herself. And yeah, I... I like... The, the emphasis for me moving forward was to, like, collect these like checkpoints in life like graduate from college go to vet school get married have children and like when disability is a factor now um i have a very hard time finding any worth in myself yeah yeah same i mean uh I went to college and my mom pushed me and pushed me and pushed me to go and I did want to go you know for my own reasons but she had specific ideas for me you should get to nursing or you should get into teaching and just completely just drilling this into me that I should and uh, <laughs> I knew that I wasn't built for that and so I did when I did finally go to college and um, I told her I was double majoring in psych and sociology. She was very disappointed in me. <laughs> like, wow. extremely. What are you going to do with that, huh? Like, uh, I don't know. Gee, help children? Because that's right. what I've always wanted to do is help children who were abused and mm -hmm. uh, help them sort through um, a lot of the major issues that they suffer from because of the violence and abuse they, they went through. But uh, my dreams didn't matter. It only mattered that um, I had a job and I had found some rich guy because you can love a rich man just as easy as you can <sighs> love a poor man because you choose love. Love doesn't choose you. Mm -hmm. Which is something, it was a major point of contention between us that uh, the ideas of behind love and relationships and things of that sort. We butted heads a lot on that, but, um, but yeah, I kind of went my own way and she really hated it. Although, you know, my disability did hold me back big time because PTSD, mm -hmm. major depression, these kind of things. And, um, yeah, when she died, I was just, I shut down for a few years. Um, so I, I could not go back to school. Mm. In the condition I was in, and plus I was dirt poor, didn't have nothing, couldn't find a job, had to, but I did finally find work. It was like at Wendy's, uh, mm -hmm. which is if, in case y'all don't know if you're out of the country or whatever. Wendy's is a hamburger restaurant chain, so yeah, 
it's a crap <laughs> job. Minimum wage. Yes. Yeah. Which was at that time I believe was like seven twenty five. But um but yeah, I always have this thing where if I'm not busy, I'm not accomplishing something, I feel like I'm less of a person. Mm-hmm. And that's still something that I struggle with. Yeah. I think we we all do who have been in this position have gone through this. Oh, yeah. And uh, it says here that such women appear to be superheroes, but their productivity and achievement doesn't make them feel accomplished or comfortable on the inside. They never give themselves the credit they deserve and continually struggle with feelings of inadequacy. And that's kind of a thing. If you're an outside on the outside looking in, it does kind of appear that, oh, wow, they're doing all this stuff. But on the inside, they don't feel fulfilled. No, not at all. And and you could be, I mean, I was in high school. I, I was um, in the top. 5%, I believe, of my class and Ooh. was in extracurricular activities that, like, for example, our marching band marched in the 2003 Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. So these, like, big accomplishments. And even during that time when I was accomplishing all of that, which to me right now, like, if I could even do one of those things would be amazing. But even, even in that that time period, I was just like, I'm still not good enough. Because it yeah. was just reinforced. Yep, definitely. Um, see, for me, it was kind of a mixed bag. Like, I wanted to please my mom in terms of, like, I was a caregiver. I cared for her, and, uh, of course, I, we had, that's a long story, but she had a boyfriend with a traumatic head injury that we took care of and uh i helped her with that and the, these kind of things but it was kind of for me it was a mixture of trying really hard and trying to achieve and then when it wasn't good enough i would just crash mm -hmm. i would just crash and say "Fuck you mom i'll do what i want so <laughs> are you a mary marvel one way to identify whether you are is to look at how you define yourself do you typically describe yourself as who you are? For example, I am a loving, kind person who strives to be honest and to live a life that contributes to society in some significant way, or is your identity more closely tied to what you do? I am a CEO for a large manufacturing firm, I am a business owner, I am an attorney, or I am a mother of four and a Girl Scout leader who also teaches Sunday school. I, I do this to this day. Like, I don't know how to not do that. Um, typically, yeah. when, when people ask me to describe myself, the first thing I say is disabled uh, mm. and sick, chronically ill. And that's not me. <laughs> like, it's, it's a majority of my life, don't get me wrong, and factors in immensely. But... It doesn't give them any information on who I am as a person. Mm. It should be, I'm Casey. I am hilarious. I am caring. And I'm very, very inquisitive and smart. Aww. You're, you're, too you're, sweet. Always will, you're always willing to learn. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of rare. To be yeah, I'm finding that out. Like, I didn't think that was a rare thing. Yes, um. totally is <laughs> scary. Um, how I would describe myself? I'm a bitch. I'm a lover. I'm a child. I'm a mother. <laughs> I love that song. <laughs> <laughs> but honestly, I mean that's kind of yeah. I'm a bitch. Whatever. Yeah, but you're like way more loving and caring. Like before that. I, I would I would at least list that before the bitch part. <laughs> <laughs> I have a nice little balance between bitch and lover. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's homeostasis. We gotta yes. keep everything manageable. Yes, I am. I do have a passive aggressive streak that I'm still working on, and uh, that is a problem. 
Mm. But, eh. I'll deal with it. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, I used to do this kind of thing, too. I still do it from time to time. I'm um, a snarky. I'm an artist. I do YouTube. Uh, you know, and honestly, this kind of is reflective of society once again, because our society is very narcissistic. It's very mm. driven on, well, what do you do for us kind of um, framework. So that's also not helpful. Mm. You know, it, it's like mostly... Most of the time, whenever you first meet a person, you know, the first question they ask is, what do you do? What do you do for mm -hmm. a living? What do you do? What do you do? What are your hobbies? Yeah. Uh, sitting. <laughs> I, like, I, like, I like to sit. And um, I like cartoons. Oh, I sound like a stoner now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. I could just sit and watch cartoons all day. Yes, yeah, like totally did. Where's my car, dude? Where's um, my car? It's like I'm like a Valley Girl stoner now. <laughs> <laughs> That's an interesting um, combo. Yeah, I, I'm sh it's totally a thing. No doubt in my mind whatsoever. So, um, the next part I have highlighted is uh, you might have learned that you had to be a doer from your mother in order to be accepted or approved. And that kind of gets to the heart of the matter. You know, I want to be approved of. I have to have mm -hmm. that stamp of approval. Mm -hmm. I, I've, I've got to be regulated. Validated. From, yeah, from the outside as opposed to the inside. Um, if your mother was an accomplishment-oriented narcissist, as discussed in Chapter 3, which my mom was, you grew up emulating this role model and following the rule that you had to achieve to be worthy. Even though this was expected of you, however, your accomplishments don't really make you feel good about yourself. No matter how much you try to accomplish and perform, you still hear the internal message. It's not good enough. Mm-hmm. I'm that way with my art, big time. Mm. And my art is something that I actually just, it's not something my mom ever really wanted me to pursue. Uh, but I did anyway, cause she's dead now. Ha! <laughs> and, but I still, like I look at my raccoons back there and I go, oh, this is wrong and that's wrong. And it looks like a vagina. And it's awesome. Uh, it does look like a It's vagina. beautiful. But, but uh, yeah, they're coming out of a vagina tree, and I'm <laughs> just cool with it. It's, I mean, life is life, you know? Just say that you were kind of inspired by um, Georgia O'Keeffe. Yeah. O'Keeffe. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> <laughs> oh. But yeah, I mean, I'm really overcritical. I'm my own worst critic, and this is this internalized voice of my mother. And father, to be honest. Mm hmm. Hi, Dad. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, I hope you're watching this, you fucking paranoid piece of shit. Anyway. Right? He sounds yeah. like he would want to know what's being said. <laughs> no. Nah. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I derailed. She. she <laughs> that's okay. That's, we need derailments. <laughs> Yay! Off the tracks! Uh, so, she goes on to say, This attitude is frustrating, sad, and difficult. There is always a push to do more, but doing more makes you feel better about yourself only temporarily. So, you up the ante, hoping somehow that it will work in the end. Most daughters of narcissistic mothers don't understand the origins of this impulse, but they feel they need to keep it up. As Pressman and Pressman say in their book, The Narcissistic Family, the roots of workaholism are truly sown in narcissistic homes. I do, therefore I am, could be the motto of many adult children from these homes. And, you know, right. the, it, it just very well describes kind of what was... Uh, what was important in our household. I do, therefore I am. Yep. I'd always hear, I was a nurse for 20 years and I worked all these shifts and blah blah blah. And, 
<sighs> your daddy didn't do nothing and you don't do nothing. Like, well, mm. thanks. You're just like your dad. Oh, I hate that. Don't, you, don't mm. ever tell you. If you've got kids out there, don't ever say that to them. Don't ever do that. Unless it's a compliment, like you have your mother's eyes or whatever. Yeah, or like a similar hobby, something yeah. like that. But yeah, don't, but... like, if you're, if you're mad about what your child is doing at that moment and you just ridicule the other half of that equation, it's going to do way more harm than good. It's abusive. Yeah, it's abuse. So, yeah. But yeah, um, she goes on to say um, that she admits the category fits her and uh, sometimes she's able to, uh, to give herself credit for what she's accomplished. Even though she's done so, I feel something might be missing. I always feel that way too. In fact, I'll just continue reading. Um, throughout my life, it would actually make me angry when others asked me why I was doing something more, another degree, another business idea, another major project. You yourself probably won't really be able to explain it to yourself until you've completed, until you complete recovery and uncover all the dynamics behind it. We daughters may try to explain ourselves as being type A personalities or just overly ambitious, but inside we know that our personal rat race has another cause. A recurring dream I had in my early years after graduate school illustrates this unconscious co compulsion to always work harder and get it right. I'm standing in front of a mirror in the bedroom, trying to get dressed, as I am trying on several different outfits in arduous, frustrating slow motion. Nothing looks right or is working correctly. I keep changing clothes regardless. A voice in the hall outside the bedroom is calling me. Come on, you're okay the way you are. I misinterpret this I misinterpreted this dream for years, thinking it had something to do with my husband's impatience with me when we were getting ready to go somewhere. I ultimately realized, however, that the voice in the hall was my intuition calling out to me, voicing the validation that I am okay as I am. Mm -hmm. That is something that ever since I read this, I like got it. <laughs> stuck in my head right mm. and every day has been kind of like this mantra I've been trying to you know repeat I'm okay as I am I'm okay as I am and that really helps it really does it's it's kind of like this the psychological dynamic of when you repeat something enough you start to believe it right and you know this works whether or not it's true but yeah <laughs> in this case i mean you can categorize the different things that are okay about yourself as you are mm -hmm. you do have good qualities uh, un unless you're donald trump <laughs> uh but <laughs> <laughs> who's a narcissist but yes. um but yeah the there are, like I was telling Casey, you know, uh, there are wonderful qualities about her that don't immediately pop up into her head. And I have the same thing. Like, I think, oh, you know, all the reoccurring stuff from my childhood. And that's why it works. It's repeated and repeated and repeated. Mm -hmm. And you start to believe it. What you have to do is reprogram that. Tell yourself, I am funny. I am beautiful. I am caring. I have something unique to offer the world. Find out what that unique something is and focus on that. Mm -hmm. Anyway. Yeah, I keep I keep trying like every time the, the negative voices start in to, to kind of stop that in its tracks. It's a battle. Mm -hmm. And every day, sometimes every hour, every minute, every moment. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's one key factor in all of this is if you are able to stay in that moment instead of going back into the past and all the awful things that you were told in your past, if you stay here now and say, I'm okay as I am now, that helps. 
Mm -hmm. It helps kind of ground you into the present instead of dragging you back into that toxicity. Yeah. Yeah, that's actually one um, tactic that I use for, like, flashback moments. Mm -hmm. I try to, to say, okay, now go through and describe everything in your field of vision. And, you know, every sense, touch, taste, sound, all of that that's going on right now, mm -hmm. because your brain will have to then focus on that instead of the flashback going on. Yes. Yes. I am safe here in this room that smells like lavender oil. <laughs> <laughs> I heard that's good for everything. It totally is. Have you tried it? <laughs> uh, I have not. But seriously though, you know, just I am safe in this room. It's a little cold and I'm talking with my good friend Casey and we are discussing issues that we are dealing with bravely, <laughs> in fact. And hopefully, we're helping people. We are in this with the intent of helping each other and mm -hmm. helping other people that suffer from their childhood. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. It's so worth it. <laughs> yes, and it we're really safe. Is. And we're yes. safe. And we're here right now. Mm -hmm. And y'all out there in the audience... You're not here with us now. You'll be here next Monday. Hi, Monday! <laughs> Hi! Uh, <laughs> but you're here with us now in the chat. So, yeah. Hi! Probably with the safe. wonderful Mrs. Snarky. Aw, and the beautiful and sweet Miss, Mrs. Casey. <laughs> Anyways. So the next section, uh, so what does this mean? If you fit the description of a Mary Marvel, you may be asking the question, but what if my choices are mine and I'm doing what I want, although it just happens to be at a higher level of achievement than many people care to pursue? Is this wrong? Of course, a significant number of high achievers are doing the things that they really want to do. Many daughters of narcissistic mothers who took the Mary Marvel route are truly accomplished, amazing women, and I honor their multitude of talents. In fact, sometimes the narciss narcissistic mother's legacy ends up being a gift that provides you with an inner drive that others may not have. One woman, an exceptionally talented artist, explained it this way. I've always felt that my art was something untouchable. My narcissistic mother would, could not affect it because it was an inner event and therefore not subject to her influence. It was a private joy that flourished and thrived as I grew. I had to spend so much time on the inside of myself, not disturbing her, being quiet and unseen, that my drawing abilities sort of became a natural outgrowth of that. If I had to come up with a positive result of growing up in a narcissistic home, that would top my list. I so identify with that. See, I was just like my dad, you know, mm -hmm. he was an artist. He was an artist, very, very, oh. very talented artist. He's a shit person, very good artist. And um, I had to suppress that part of myself. It actually even made me angry, just automatically, when I would try to express myself artistically. After mom died, it, it was my own thing. Mm -hmm. It's my thing. And yeah, I still have this na nagging voice of the vagina. Uh, no, tree. you're amazing at it. But, For real. Um, but it is my own. So mm -hmm. I, I can identify with that freedom. Mm -hmm. that's, that's really cool. So if you are a high achiever pursuing your chosen life dreams and you are giving yourself credit and taking good care of yourself in the process, you are doing it so right. High achievement becomes a problem only when you have medical or mental health problems associated with not taking care of yourself seek only external validation to determine your self-worth, find that you cannot give yourself credit for what you accomplish in all aspects of your life. Uh, so next we're gonna look at each of these Mary Marvel pitfalls so we can make sure that we have not entrapped ourselves or if they have, that we can take 
steps to climb out of them. So I have, I don't know about you, but I have suffered all of these things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and when you see, the thing is, they, they all go together, okay? If you're looking externally for validation and you don't get it, it makes you feel like, well, why try? Mm -hmm. It sends you into this depression. At least it does for me, because I've just me too kind of inherently mel melancholic <laughs> it's, it's the artist in me okay, okay. <laughs> um but yeah jokes aside i do have like a really deep depression kind of thing i do the shutdowns i have i may have autism so that kind of plays into it um so yeah whenever you're looking at the external for validation and you don't receive it it's devastating. Mm -hmm. It's crushing. But when you're, what were you gonna say? I said it's crushing. Definitely, very crushing, and you feel like, well, why take care of myself? And that's the thing. Whenever you're trying to do anything for your health, whether it's quit smoking, lose weight, <clears throat> Jennifer, Casey, <laughs> <laughs> it has to come from you. You have to want it. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's the same with accomplishing any other task. You, ha it has to come from you. If it does not, it will fail. Mm -hmm. Because other people are fickle, <laughs> okay? They're, they're interested in themselves, okay? And yeah, they have interest in you as well, but mainly they're thinking about themselves as mostly. So it's your responsibility to self-care. Mm -hmm. Always. That is on you. So, and I do understand that there's a, a lot of nuance to this. If you don't have health insurance, you don't have blah, 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 whatever. Take a bath, wash your ass, brush your teeth. <laughs> you know, if you are able to do these things, do them. If you're not, then you're not. Okay, if you require extra help, then you do, okay? Mm -hmm. But seek out that help. If you can't wash your ass, say, hey, somebody wash my ass. Right. And okay? it's hard to ask for, yes. for help when you're in that position, but it's the only way that you're going to get through it without um, yeah. completely destroying yourself mentally, yeah. physically. Yeah. I mean... It is hard to ask for help, but people have to understand that, you know, they're worth helping. It's like, you know, my foot was broken, I couldn't do anything, and it sucked, but I got to where, you know, I was like, hey, I can't do this, so if you want it done, you're going to have to do it, mm -hmm. and you have to just be assertive. Don't be an asshole. Just be Brain. assertive. Say, look, I'm going to get a rash on my ass if it ain't washed. Mm -hmm. Please wash my ass. Please help me. I cannot do it myself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I, I, it's a weird example, but it, it can be applied to other things other than ass washing. I don't know right. why that, like, I don't know why that's what popped in my head. I guess uh. it's because I've had to wash asses before. Uh, my grandmother was a stroke victim. She suffered three strokes. Mm -hmm. uh, the, first, the first one took her ability to walk, um, you know, so, and go to the bathroom by herself. So I had to wipe her ass. And you know what? I was really happy to do something for her. Mm -hmm. So it's fine. It's okay to need someone else. Mm -hmm. And it's okay to take responsibility for what you're able to do for yourself. Mm -hmm. Anyway, Ty, I just went off on a tangent <laughs> again. I do oh, that. It's okay. That's what the show is for. Yay! <laughs> um, but yeah, basically, um, she says the same thing. Um, it's self-destructive, um, similar to alcoholism and drug or food addiction. Um, is this busyness or workaholism. And if you become chronically exhausted, I'm dying. Hold on. Uh oh, don't die! 
Oh, my blood sugars are high, so it's bitching uh -oh. at me. Speaking I got of self-care. Right? Yeah. Speaking of, what where is my is? insulin pump? That's a serendipitous moment right here. Right? Oh, you know what I... Uh, I didn't... Oops. Um, because I have to take the pump off when I get in the shower. And oh. you have to stop it to do that. And I never turned it back on, so... Oh, yikes. That would explain it. Yeah, that, that'll do it. You think just turning it back on, it'll level No, I'll have sugar? to correct for it. Okay. Which I'm trying to do. If you become chronically exhausted and find that you can't slow down and are beginning to have health problems, it is time to take an inventory of whether or not your activities fit your own value system rather than your mother's or your internalized critic, and whether they are healthy for you. Looking strong and invulnerable on the outside may be an attempt to escape the emptiness and pain of feelings of unworthiness on the inside. And yes, yeah. you're all worth it, so please take care of yourself. Yeah, definitely. And it all comes back to who do you see in the mirror? Mm -hmm. Um... And if you're a workaholic, like, I get it. I have, I've been a workaholic before, right? But, and there were days when I would come home and I was just like, ah, just, I was like managing a jack in the box. And so I've been there 12 hours, right? And I would smell like fries and burgers and, you know, sweat. And, but I had to go and drag my ass in the shower. Mm hmm I had to because self care is number one. Mm -hmm. You just, you have to. Oh, and you get so full of grease. Like, you don't even have to be that close to an actual fryer. Mm -mm. Um, that was my first job I had was in a bar slash restaurant. And um, I, I washed dishes, I didn't mind it. But, yeah, you would just, like, you would get home and you could, like, feel it in your hair. Mm -hmm. And, like, even after getting out of the shower, there would be times where I'm like, I swear to God, I still smell it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Days later. I mean, it's crazy. But I had to quit that job because I had to self-care. It was too much for me. Mm-hmm. It was, I wasn't spending enough time with my kids. I wasn't having any time to really recuperate from the job. And I, as far as my mental health, it was a nightmare. I mean, if you have PTSD and you're working in a busy, busy off of the freeway um, burger joint, I mean, that's stressful. It's really stress stressful. We ran out of ketchup. Oh shit! Right. You know. <laughs> and trying to, and working with teenagers. Oh my god. Don't even get me started. How uh, stressful that shit is. I had some bitches like coming in high, and they'd be like, "I'm just gonna lay down in the napkins." Like no. <laughs> I'd have to like chase some bitches around. I find them asleep in the cooler, the walking cooler. Jesus. Uh, this is crazy. And then there's this one lady that would always ask to sweep the parking lot so she could go out there and drink. Oh, jeez. Yeah. And I, there, we had cameras, right? And I would, like, sit there in the in the manager's office just watching her drink her vodka in her truck. And uh, <laughs> she'd come back. Holy shit. She would Listerine real quick. Oh, the yeah, that. And she would come back and I'd be like, so, um... How was your uh, mint teeny? <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? I'm not drunk. Mm -hmm. Go home. Go home. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I did. I sent that bitch home. Uh, anyway. But yeah, self-care. I had to quit because it was too much. I knew what my limits were. And if I had listened to that it was my mom's voice to begin with that got me to push myself to that position of overseeing everybody in the restaurant 
Mm. And then I just, I came to this realization that it was just way too much for my mental health and my physical health. And I had to quit. And uh, also my kids' grades went up after I quit. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> that was really good bonus. Mm -hmm. So anyway. So the, the next uh, characteristic, internal versus external validation. Uh, the need for validation can be a catch-22. If a child did not receive validation in her early developmental years and as a young woman is not able to validate herself, she often succumbs to the lure of doing more and trying harder in ways that bring validation from others. This is an unconscious seduction because Mary Marvels are almost always highly skilled and competent. It is therefore not difficult to obtain external validation from friends, family, work, or society in general. The praise appears to fill the emptiness, but relying on external praise can create anxiety. Because it is external validation, the daughter does not own it or control it, and it can be taken away from her at any time. If she does not continue to accomplish, it will also disappear. When you learn to rely on yourself for validation, on the other hand, you rest peacefully at night. You will be learning more about how to do this in the recovery section of the book, but let's look closely now at why you find it so difficult to give yourself credit. And yeah. Um, yeah. The, next, the next parts are like, oh. Uh-huh, right? <laughs> <laughs> But there yeah. are many situations where, like, I'll push myself beyond physical or emotional limits for other people because mm -hmm. I know that that will accomplish something. Yeah. It's, um, yeah, it's not good for your mental health mm -hmm. to be a people pleaser. Because let me, let me tell you a secret, okay? You can't please everyone. Hell, you can't totally please any one person, mm -hmm. much less all the people you know. You're mm -hmm. going to have disagreements. You're going to have spats. You're going to get, you know, you're going to have issues. There are going to be times when people are not happy with you. Sometimes for good reason, sometimes for not. And when you're sure of yourself and you know that what your principles are and who you are as a person sometimes you'll be able to say oh that's bullshit like mm -hmm. you shouldn't try to make me feel bad about this or that and the other because people will whether they're conscious or not of it they will try to manipulate you mm -hmm. emotionally and any other way financially and if you're not sure of yourself, if you're a people pleaser, you're going to get taken advantage of in these ways. Mm. So it's one of the big lessons that I'm still learning to this day is dealing with this people pleasing um, drive that I have because of how I was raised because of mom and dad and, you know, trying to juggle all this, this, uh, surface i guess is a good way of putting it and uh there was no pleasing them so i always found myself disappointed yeah and uh a lot of the time it was not my fault sometimes it was sometimes it was totally me and i had to reflect on that and i had to alter you know behaviors and things that i would say but other times they were just being fucking ridiculous mm -hmm. and i don't have to put up with that shit because i am worth something mm -hmm. you're good enough you're smart enough and god damn it gosh, people like you gosh darn it <laughs> i'm a stable genius <laughs> <laughs> i am good enough as i am mm -hmm. I'm just good as I am and it's I'm still a process yes I can do I can do better and I strive to do better but god damn it people ain't gonna run me over mm -hmm. so but am I arrogant 
<laughs> now this is a, as a stable genius i can tell you i'm not but uh <laughs> i'm so humble uh yeah i'm more humble than all y'all like <laughs> but i know that casey and i have had this discussion before you know just in our chats uh am i my mother mm -hmm. right and oh that is like the number one, once you realize that your mother was a narcissist and that you, you know, were damaged and, you know, you damaged a bunch or that your mother damaged other people as well as yourself, you start to wonder, holy shit, you know, being raised in this, do I have these patterns mm -hmm. myself? Um, it says here, many daughters are afraid to give themselves credit. On the rare occasions they do, they feel as if they're behaving like narcissists or at least acting arrogant like their mothers. If you are worried about emulating your mother in this way, remind yourself that a true narcissist has grandiose sense of self-importance or exaggerates achievements and talents, expects to be recognized as superior without commi commiserate, commiserate achievements words are hard okay they are uh the the narcissist is arrogant in disingenuous ways and most times with nothing to back up the bragging spree she needs to make herself look bigger than she really is because she feels inadequate but most high achieving mary marvel daughters have a ton of real achievements because they have worked so hard it is not narcissistic to be proud of your achievements and accomplishments. You do not need to brag, but give yourself credit you deserve. By giving yourself credit where credit is due, you can help slow down the rat race of do, do, do. Feel good about what you have already done. Mm -hmm. I took a shower. I feel good about it. I yes. feel accomplished. That was me I, today. I, I did that. <laughs> I was the best me I could be. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, this is a common thing that, you know, a common worry for those of us who have been brought up by narcissists is, holy shit, am I going to turn out to be, I mean, genetics and environment and all, did I pick up these traits? Mm -hmm. Am I wrong to be like, oh, I'm proud of my artwork? Yeah, and you I feel know, like um, like I do this, I don't know if you do, I think so, I think I've seen you do this, but I minimize things when people bring it up. They'll be like, hey, you know, this is really awesome that you did that, I'm like, eh, it's whatever, you know, it's no big your deal. Art, your art is beautiful, it looks like a vagina. <laughs> <laughs> right? Case in point. <laughs> yes. Yes. This is exhibit A, point <laughs> one, two, three, four, five. Uh, anyways. But yeah, this is really common and really sad because, you know, we strive to do these things because we have this inner need to feel accomplished, to feel in order to be, feel secure in ourselves. And we don't even grant ourselves the, um, the credit for what we've done. Mm hmm and that's really sad. We should do that. Yeah. You're a great vagina painting. <laughs> I'm proud of you, vagina raccoons. I birthed you. That's very true. That's not my vagina. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Well, like, and it kind of, like, leads into the next issue, which is, am I an imposter? Another reason high-achieving Mary Marvels have difficulty giving themselves internal praise is a fear called the imposter syndrome. Someone who suffers from the imposter syndrome is unable to accept and claim her accomplishments, no matter what level of success she has achieved or maintained. She may have abundant proof of her hard-won accomplishments, including wealth and material goods, but remains convinced that she either doesn't deserve her success or that she is just a fraud. She dismisses outward signs of accomplishment as just good luck or good timing. 
An imposter usually feels as if she has been deceptive, having made others think she is more intelligent or skilled than she believes herself to be. Most people who admit to feeling like imposters are women, although there is some evidence that many men may feel this way too. High achieving daughters of narcissistic mothers are at great risk for the imposter syndrome because we were raised to feel that we were never good enough. When a woman does not feel worthy internally, she believes that she is undeserving and cannot accept success or recognition. Yeah, know your place. Um, but yeah, when it comes to what was said about men, I think that, well, this is just me anecdotally, you know, telling you my observation, but from what I've seen, men are raised typically to suppress emotions. We don't talk about emotions. Mm -hmm. just been... So any kind of imposter syndrome or otherwise would be suppressed and not worked through, maybe worked through in their own way, um, but definitely not documented as, as often. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, in this book, we're focusing on mother daughter relationships, but uh, it would be interesting to see uh, the perspective of narcissistic dads and son mm -hmm. dynamic, you know. Yeah. I imagine it would be uh, very similar. Maybe, maybe slightly different on, but it, anyway, it'd just be an interesting study. Yeah, uh, it would. But yeah, I, I often feel like someone told me the other day I was a philosophical encyclopedia. And I was like, ah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> right? And like, I don't know everything there is to know about philosophy. Like, it's just straight up, I don't. But on the other hand, I know a lot more than the majority. And mm -hmm. I didn't even bother to give myself credit for that. Right. I, my first thought was, I don't know shit about philosophy. Like, you know, that was where my mind went to. And I had to kind of go through this dialectic in my head. Oh, shit. That's a philosophical reference. Fuck. Anyway, yeah. I had to kind of go through this process of, you know, saying, okay, well, I know some, or, I, or I, do I know, am I an encyclopedia or not kind of thing? And no, I'm not an encyclopedia, but I do know more than... Uh, just the average person definitely yeah. don't know more than like Dr. Greg Sadler. <laughs> well, yeah, you know. but I mean, <laughs> you wrote for him. Yeah. So, yeah. which is he amazing, and it was an amazing he article. He gave me critique, and I'm oh. proud of that. <laughs> That's awesome. I am very proud of that article. I accomplished that. Mm -hmm. It's so hard to say. It's, even now, it's really hard to say that I accomplished that article, and I'm proud of it. Mm -hmm. it, it feels like somebody else did it. Mm -hmm. You know, like the imposter syndrome. It, mm -hmm. It's just so difficult for me to take credit for the things I did. Yeah, anyway. It really is, yeah. Um, I just have, like, the last bit here. Um, highlighted an article titled Introduction of the Imposter Syndrome details some narcissistic family dynamics. Attitudes, beliefs, direct or indirect messages that we received from our parents or from other significant people in our lives early on may have contributed to the development of imposter feelings. Certain family situations and dynamics tend to contribute to imposter feelings. When the success and career aspirations conflict with the family expectations of the gender, race, religion, or age of the person, families who impose unrealistic standards, families who are very critical, and families who are ridden with conflict and anger. Um, mm. High achieving daughters with the imposter syndrome are at great risk for generalized anxiety, lack of self-confidence, depression, and frustration related to inability to meet self-improved standards of achievement and cannot usually stop providing their proving their worth until they work through a recovery program 
I definitely had all that highlighted as well. Yep. <laughs> it's very poignant. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it, since this is focusing on, you know, this particular dynamic, narcissistic mothers and the daughters who were raised by them, I do want to point out that there are, there is this family dynamic that does tend to occur when uh, someone is deviant in any way um, in terms of gender, religion, whatever. Um, and I don't mean deviant as in, ooh, devious. I mean, a deviation or something different other than the norm in society. Mm -hmm. I'm using a sociological definition of the term deviant. Um, so yeah, and that often leads to very, very tragic results as well. But uh, in this case, the tragic result being someone's life is ruined because they were raised to believe that their worth, they're worthless, really, mm -hmm. uh, essentially, and that the only way they can achieve any type of worth is through other people. Right. And that is... It's a path to destruction. It's a path to self-destruction. And uh, our mothers planted that seed within us. Mm -hmm. And uh, the realization of that is the first step. But there are a lot of things that you have to work through in order to um, get through that. And... Mm -hmm. It's a lot of programming to try and undo. It's years worth. Yeah. Yep, and uh, talking about it and uh, identifying these different ways that we're programmed to think is a good way of sorting through and recovering from it. Because if you don't know that this pattern came from this source, then you can't you can't defeat it. You have to be mm. able to identify the source right. and uh, and uh, the symptoms. So uh, the summary here. Does the glass slipper fit? If you find you fit the description of Mary Marvel, know you are not alone. Your path to recovery will become clear in part three of this book. Many daughters of narcissistic mothers got the message to do well, but not too well, because they might outshine mom. I don't want to give you a mixed message too. So let me say again that your accomplishments are truly a marvel. You have overcome great odds and are an amazing woman. And now you need to care for yourself and give yourself credit you deserve, the credit you deserve. Uh, then you would be able to enjoy the marvel that you truly are and cherish yourself as you deserve. Mm -hmm. So one thing I do want to say is I think it's very important. Uh, and I tell myself this all the time and I need to take this advice because it's, I think, important is um, it would be nice just for once to take care of myself as well as I would another person. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because I would be so well taken care of. Yeah, so, we tend to, to do things for other people a lot more willingly than we will for ourselves. Yeah. And it's, it's a tragedy. Mm-hmm. Because we are worth, we have worth. And recognizing that worth is an individual journey that we all must take. Like, I can't tell you what your worth is any more than, you know? Like, mm -hmm. I could say what I see in you of value. Mm -hmm. But until you see that worth and you say, pick it up and realize it and own it yourself, that it's meaningless. Mm -hmm. Especially if you're raised like we were. You get compliments and I I can't take a compliment. I just yeah. can't. I have a hard time with that. It's like, oh, you're beautiful. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> you're just like, saying you that because you have to. <laughs> yeah, like, you're just being nice or whatever. At least that's what's going on in my internal dialogue. Mm -hmm. You know. I've come to where I'll be like, oh, thank you. But 
inside, I'm just like, are you kidding me? I'm fat. My hair's a mess. My paintings mm -hmm. look like vaginas. And... <laughs> it always comes back to the tree and the, vi I... the vagina tree. We all come from the vagina. <laughs> it is true. Mm -hmm. That's why it always comes back to... No, I don't know. I was having a dialogue, a vagina dialogue, if you will. <laughs> a vagina log? Yeah, a vagina log. That sounds like a dildo or something. Yeah, it kind of does. <laughs> <laughs> it's a brown one. Ooh. Just hopefully it has no splinters. Right? Didn't they have, like, the oh. first dildos, weren't they made of wood? I don't know, honestly. I think so. Oh. I think they were. Oh, and I can't imagine. Splinters. I mean, you'd have to sand the shit out of that thing. Yeah. But yeah, let us know in the chat, where did, what was the first dildos made of? Yeah. Somebody's what gonna material? be like, Stone Age, come on, there were rocks. <laughs> Like, you know, the ag agricultural folks were going to be like, no, it was a cucumber. <laughs> <laughs> like, wow. Uh, oh, man. Yeah, I honestly don't know. I've seen, like, um, awful, like, torture devices that they used to use to curb sexual shit, but I've never, like, delved deep into sex toy history <laughs> giggity <laughs> <laughs> that's hysterical uh, 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 i see what you did there <laughs> uh, uh, yeah i've got jokes <laughs> have to uh, heavy subject and mm. uh hard times hard times yes. giggity um yeah hard we're, <laughs> we're going through a lot right now and uh, it's part of the reason why I haven't really, I mean, the foot thing, definitely valid, but it's also been kind of like a mental health thing for me. Mm -hmm. uh, all the stuff that's been going on has been just really freaking me out. And I don't want to get on YouTube and be like, hey, I'm freaking out here. Right. You know, yeah. Not very helpful. I want my channel and my uh, work any work that I participate in like this to be enjoyable mm -hmm. to some degree and helpful. So hopefully that comes across. Yes, it does for me. Yay. <laughs> Good. <laughs> but yeah, so um, next time, chapter seven, what's the use, the self-sabotaging daughter yeah see like i said we'll get into that more in the next chapter but i'm totally a mixture mm -hmm. i try 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 really motivated you know i'm gonna take over the world and then i'm like fuck this i failed mm -hmm. <sighs> so many unfinished projects i'll tell you yeah i have a few of those <laughs> But yeah, that's, so that's um, chapter six, and uh, um, delving more into it next time. Uh, why don't you chill yourself again? <laughs> I'm Mrs. Starkey! <laughs> and I got a channel, I think. I forget where I put it, but I'll find it someday. Soon. There's a link in the description. <laughs> and uh, you get, on my channel, I give such pearls of wisdom, such as, you can never have too much lube. It's true. So tune, tune in for that, and buy my vagina art. <laughs> yes, buy the art. There's a link to your <laughs> red bubble store. I got titty art, too. <laughs> that's, uh, that's the Grand Teton, which means titty. Oh, really? Uh, it does. <laughs> it's uh, Yellowstone. You can Google that. And your in your googlies, the titty vagina. I mean, I basically okay. sell porn. 
I was gonna say, like, if you Google that, you're probably not gonna get artwork. <laughs> well, you might. Grand Teton, T-E-T-O-N. You will Google and it will come up with uh, Yellowstone National Park. That's awesome. Because I got inspired by watching a documentary about it. Oh. And uh, there's my, my Grand Titty. <laughs> it's available on my Red Bubble and uh, I believe on my Teespring as well. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. Art. Teespring store is also done there to get awesome snarky I... merch. Everything. <laughs> like, I'm telling you, you are there's, professional as fuck. There's YouTube, Twitter, Redbubble, and Teespring, I think, are the four. Oh. Oh, Mason jars. Time for, for Granny. For Gra That's for Granny's elixir. <laughs> my, my elixir, <laughs> a.k.a. cold brew. <laughs> uh, uh, you gotta put some X's on it and tape. Oh, yeah. I remember. Totally. <laughs> the next thing you know, when you're buying Grand Teton. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that needs to be a song. <laughs> totally. It needs to exist in the world. Yes. I think it does now. Yes. That's, my, that's a snarky original. You're welcome. Copyright. Yeah, copyright. Hashtag. <laughs> oh, that hashtag's yours. Fuck. <laughs> my bad nah <laughs> you're gonna have to take this video down on your own channel now for copyright infringement on your own right show. against myself <laughs> oh my god <laughs> ah! I did not give myself permission to use this <laughs> snarky's gone rogue <laughs> get the wizard of oz <laughs> anyway that's an inside joke, sort of, I guess. Yeah. Okay. And that was the wizard himself. Yes, that was the wizard. <laughs> <laughs> Pay no attention to the man behind the curtain wall. Thing. <laughs> yes. Uh, but yeah, so join us next time for chapter seven. And keep watching for the blooper reel. There's more than a few. Yeah. As usual. <laughs> and yeah, so have a wonderful day, night, and um, the life is shit, and it certainly is right now. Um, so keep hanging in there with hashtag and Mrs. Snarky. And don't inject. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't inject disinfectant. <laughs> Yes. Please. Don't do it. People die. Oh, Don't listen God. to Trump either. Anyway. No. No. But yeah. <laughs> we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Okay. Test recording. Please Hello. Record. Uh, we're recording and uh, we're testing and this is totally not a blooper. Nope. No. No bloops. Off the air. Off the record. I did not have sexual relations. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we are recording again. We are? Oh shit. I'm Please. in trouble. <laughs> we'll no longer talk about that breakfast I ate that was totally racist. <laughs> For some fucking reason. I didn't even read the article. There's, I didn't either. There's just no no way I could take that seriously. No. What was it? Was it Medium or Axios or No, it was oh hold on. Mother something. Mother Jones? Yes. <laughs> yeah, it was Mother Jones. Oh god. And Trump was just using hyperbole. Right? It was it was sarcasm. It was when sarcasm he came out. when and he I said, said that, that we should inject disinfectant. God. Yeah, yeah. Burn your insides with UV light. Oh my God, he is so dumb. Does he even know why they put the lead bib on you when you go in to get an X-ray? Like, I'm sure he doesn't. Uh, I'm sure he has it, no idea.
it must be a conspiracy. The, uh, see the lead bibs they're made in China. The uh, Chinese don't want us to cure the Rona. See? Yeah. So they gave us the lead bit. I'm just making shit. <laughs> Why not? It's off the cup. I'm just I'm just being sarcastic. Right? I mean, I'm, I'm bouncing things off the wall. Ideas, people. Ideas. A dialogue. A with dialogue myself. with a wall. <laughs> with myself, yes. Some well, might call that a, a monologue, but not Trump. Yeah, well, it's a beautiful wall, totally transparent, okay? So, it's totally there. You just can't see it. Right. <laughs> and, and Mexico paid for it. Mexico totally will at some point. We have a great relationship. Best deal. Huge. Tremendous. Huge. <laughs> Stable genius. I know the best people. Yep. Sure do. <laughs> I take I take no responsibility. Nope. Nope. Uh, I can just give batshit crazy medical advice that people will follow. Mm. Even though it's lethal, and then later just say, eh, it was sarcasm. It would have been better if he would have been just like, you know, put potatoes in your socks. You right. Know, what could it hurt? What could it mm -hmm. hurt? At least it won't kill you. Mm hmm. Like hydroxychloroquine. Oh, yeah, that too. Some kind of weird noises coming from outside. Yours or mine? mine. Oh, are you ready to jump into this? <laughs> yes, let's do that. I try so hard to jump into this. <laughs> I have one more thing to say, and it has, kind of has something to do with the book, but because she mentions glass slippers, and I know that's like a metaphor, you know, this is very valuable, blah, blah, blah. But can you imagine having to wear a glass slipper no like mm. what if you had to what if you had to run in them and they like broke right and just ate your feet like just, yeah Ugh. like jaws <laughs> seriously glass slippers uh what the and f i always like that would be really sweaty too like that's not a good material to put like skin into <laughs> no no would not be i guess socks but who mm. would wear socks with slippers like right that? with glass slippers yeah i mean i could make fun of if i would dare to ever not that i would wear socks with sandals mm -hmm. oh the scandal <laughs> Yeah, that's right, y'all. I'm scandalous. So, so, so scandalous. Do, do. Yep. That's right. But anyway, yeah, it's just glass slippers. What the fuck, history? Mm -hmm. What the fuck, fairy tales? Was this really a thing? I Let don't know. know. Let us know in the comments. Yes. <laughs> Let us know if glass slippers were actually a thing or if it was just a fairy tale thing. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm too lazy to Google it, so just tell me. <laughs> oh, so, and you can't Google it either. It's gotta be from the noggin. Oh yeah, yeah. We'll Not only accept. To it. Or or wrong answers only in the comments. Ooh, um, hell about, yeah! About these questions, the dildo and the glass slippers. And <laughs> yes. Yes, and then you'll force us to Google it. That's right? genius. <laughs> I love that idea. See, you're brilliant. <laughs> you're brilliant. <laughs> oh, well, thank you. But I don't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I would let the awkward pause just <laughs> marinate <laughs> and see what happened. And I, I, I got what I expected. I mean, you can expect honesty from hashtag. That, <laughs> yeah. That's that's what this channel's about, y'all. I'm that typically was. honest to to a fault. That yeah. reminds me, actually. Um, so I don't know if you're familiar with the cooking channel on here called Bon Appetit, but no. um, Claire, one of the 
people who work for it, she tries to make gourmet versions of popular things like Doritos or Kit Kats or like Krispy Kremes was one of the episodes. And she, what she ends up doing though is like she'll, she'll do the first attempt, she won't be happy with it, she'll change like six things about it, and then end up not liking the second and going back to the first. And <laughs> someone is like, you know, I kind of have the inkling that Claire was the type of kid in class to remind the teacher if they didn't collect homework. <laughs> and Greg read that comment out to me and I was like, yeah, she totally does. I'm like, I, I was that kid. He's like, you know what? I just want to tell you from all of us, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. No, I had a suspicion. <laughs> you what? I had a suspicion. <laughs> I wasn't sure, but I had a suspicion that that you you were that kid. I <laughs> <laughs> See, I was about to say I haven't seen the Greg hands, so I wasn't sure whether he was actually there. Oh yeah, it could have been just a figment of my imagination. <laughs> yeah, it could have been like I don't know, one of the voice changer Poor things or shame. something. Shame. I know. Oh, you should get me. Pata, if my grandma. As a pot of your grandma? <laughs> yeah, it's like shame and like Russian or Polish, I don't know. They were always real cagey about what was actually being spoken, I don't know. <laughs> well, I... said she I, hit you with the cough level. I, I'm just gonna say, I'm not sure if this broadcast even happened because UPS hasn't showed up to ring the doorbell. <laughs> and I'm not entirely sure that's really Greg's hand because I haven't seen a thumbs up, so... <laughs> Whatever. She said she's not sure the broadcast is happening because UPS hasn't rang the doorbell. I think they delivered it and didn't do anything. Oh, like, really? Yeah, I, I, I saw like there was a delivered, but I didn't hear anybody. So I was going to go check. But then, she... Then I heard you talking about being the nerd. But she also said she doesn't know if it's really you because there wasn't a thumbs up. It's been rectified. Yay! <laughs> Verified Greg. There we go. That's definitely a Greg thumb. Yes. And I'm not... A... I, I, this whole UPS thing is a scandal. <laughs> I, I, I think y'all should get, like, a refund or something. What are you doing? What is Good going on? The walls are moving in! <laughs> the walls are closing in on me! I'm gonna get squished! Shut off all the track compactors on the detention level. <laughs> what? Star Wars. Oh. I don't know Star Wars shit. Yet yeah, we're the nerds. We're the totally the nerds. Right, we're the nerds. <laughs> <laughs> Was definitely damn a kids bird. rap music <laughs> get off my lawn get off my lawn old man yells at clouds.gif <laughs> okay you're the wizard of wisconsin thank you <laughs> yeah i mean that's pure genius though dude like for real mm -hmm. i mean i wish i had gallons of <laughs> amazing dr <laughs> pepper that wouldn't make my blood sugar spike <laughs> it, it doesn't act it's not actually difficult because like all of those uh like things you basically just need the box of syrup and the little yeah. spout although they went up in price uh since i ordered mm. went oh up like 20 bucks. they're on to you yeah, yeah. <laughs> well it's too yeah. bad we already have like a, a year's supply <laughs> uh, is that what you ups delivered more so you're yes <laughs> Uh, probably like a half a year for you, I think. Yeah, I don't know. I didn't do the math on but, how many gallons, like, I don't know. I drink like a soda a day, so 20 ounces. Them yeah. things are heavy, so I feel sorry for the UPS guy now. Mm -hmm. Maybe I feel sorry for Greg. Holy yeah, Greg shit. Had, I had to bring to... it up the stairs and then put oh. it in the pant or the. We have it in our island. Right and it spilled on me when I opened the thing. Yeah, and it spilled on him. <laughs> I didn't oh know it was going to do that. Um, <laughs> you know, just, you know, and I had this thought like years ago with you having all the, the sort of, but with yeah, you but mixing it, it, I was like, that that's going to be an absolute nightmare yeah. because how are you going to mix it? Like, especially when you're doing the regular. 
Mm-hmm. And then I had the thought, like, wait, can you just add sugar to get the effectively, like, the same thing? And then you tested it, it worked, I'm like, all right, done. Yeah. <laughs> this will Light work. bulbs. Light bulbs all around. Although the, uh, what was it, like, the soda, what the, the thing that we got, like, the soda, whatever, it's not the soda stream, it's a different one, but that one's way better. Yeah, this one is better. It's way better than the soda stream. I don't know why people buy the soda streams, because that one is, like, it has a bigger tank. Your it... mom has a bigger tank. Oh! <laughs> 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 And then I flex taped it together. That's right. There was a post about um, a flex hazmat suit. (laughs) (laughs) Now available even works in Wuhan. (laughs) Oh my god, that's great. It was hilarious. Oh, dark jokes are great. (laughs) Oh, they're the best. Oh, I get them all the time from Mike. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Just like, wow, like... You get flex tape uh, hazmat suits? <laughs> That'd be funny. That'd be funny. All the time. All the time. It's just normal. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> Tis the times we live in. Mm. Mike and I have been talking about guns all morning. Fallout 4. Guns. Okay. I was oh. like, what? <laughs> You're suddenly a gun nut? No. Like, what the hell? <laughs> no, wow. because... Because, I, thought, like, I thought I knew you, Grant. <laughs> right? Did. I did, too. <laughs> well, I'm like, no, no. He's he's like, I'll put the 50 caliber receiver on the combat rifle. I'm like, you can't put a 50 caliber combat ri- uh, receiver on a combat rifle and, and fall out. You have to put it on the hunting rifle you're thinking of. You can put a 308 or a 38, and it comes with a 45. But he, he got the Overseer's Guardian in his playthrough last night. Mm. And he was just like, this gun is, like insanely overpowered. I'm like, yeah, it's my favorite gun in a normal playthrough. Nerds! Awesome. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> hey, why don't you go tell the teacher that you forgot to collect the homework? I'm gonna tell the teacher you're a nerd. <laughs> yeah. So there. I feel attacked. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, you're a wizard, so I mean, you could repel it really easily. Like, That's true. Yeah. Yeah, what can I say? I got skills. Although there is a, uh, it, it's like, it's a Japanese meme thing on, like, image boards and stuff that if you're, Maybe? if you're a virgin at 30, you become a wizard. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, no! No, because all those incels are... <laughs> oh no! I, no, I, I, no. I, I did this and she was like, meow. Well, how full them. Yeah, she does Tim- it with me, too, if I touch her when she's under the blanket. <laughs> Tomoko is a narcissist. <laughs> she is. She because really she's is. a cat. I mean, they're all narcissists. It's all about her, all the time. Yeah. I, it's I, I her think she, I think she's more just a sociopath. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe she's a sociopathic narcissist. She, she God, just, she are you gatekeeping narcissism? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't mean. I didn't mean to gatekeep narcissism. And I'm hungry, so I'm obviously being. Uh, what, what's the, the? What is the problem? It, it's not woke to eat. Um, yeah. It's yeah. Not woke yeah. To eat. You can't eat because it's racist. Yeah. <laughs> At least not. Uh, as far as I know, it's only breakfast. But I mean, there are so many articles I have yet to read. No, just, she said I'm breakfast, only... lunch, and dinner. You can't say really? breakfast is the yes. most important meal of the day anymore. Oh my god. Well. <laughs> I'm like, can I, can I say anything? Right? <laughs> <laughs> what can I say? Can I get a small list? Of... <laughs> Casey, wait. 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 We're waiting. <laughs> the UPS truck just pulled up. <gasps> Drop the package. There it is! Yay! <laughs> <laughs> this is stream it? is officially like... It's legit. Send it. 